The deepest part of the sinkhole is around 220 feet, uh, approximately. That has changed over time. Um, and this one is even a tougher picture to show, but I, it's the one that our surveyors give us. This is kind of an outline of the sinkhole when we're looking from west, uh, east to west. So this is, uh, this is the east side and this is the west side. And these different lines basically depict the different depths that have been measured by our surveyor doing depth readings with a bathometer uh, on each of the sink, uh, surveys. This survey right here, this purple, light purple line or magenta line, was the most recent one, and that depth right there is about 220 feet deep. You can see these points down here on prior surveys uh, have shown it as deep as over 400 feet. And then this is the north-south cross-section. Um, it appears that the, the, the subsidence is occurring more toward the northwest. Um, as you can see, this area here is the western part. And then you see the northern part as you see this, this uh, material has flowed in. And that's normal and that's expected as the sand below this clay wants to flow into to try to fill up this sinkhole. Uh, as I mentioned, we take these uh, monthly. Um, but uh, the good news is it continues to appear to be filling in. But like I said, it has not gotten stable yet. So um, you will continue to see charts on this as we go forward as, as we take these future surveys. Um, probably the biggest thing that's been visible over the past week has been all of the trucks on Highway 70 coming in and out of the access road uh, just west of our drive and into our drive. Um, we're in the process of building a containment system, a set of berms that will actually surround this sinkhole. It probably will encompass somewhere between 60 and 70 acres when it's all said and done. Um, we're trying to use existing roads as much as possible, namely our drive and our facility on the eastern edge. Um, and if you'll bear with me, I'm going to flip forward a couple of charts. Um, I'll come back to this, but just to give you a lay of land, this is Highway 70, here's Bayou Corn. This is the driveway that comes into our facility, and here's our facility here. The sinkhole containment system that we're presently building will use this drive as the eastern boundary, this area right here. It will use that access road that comes off of Highway 70 as the western boundary. We have actually cut a path through the trees and are filling in dirt to build up this berm on the southern boundary and tie back into this existing access road. And then on the northern boundary, we're in the process of clearing the trees. Um, I think they started today, and they're clearing trees across here, and we'll be hauling dirt in there. Those four sides, east, south, west, and north, will make up the containment system. When it's all said and done, there'll be control structures that will allow us to control water going out or water that needs to come back in. And that's part of what uh, our engineering firm is assisting us, Tetratech, is in the process of designing. Um, at this point in time, we're probably well over 24,000 yards of dirt and sand that has come in already. And primarily to build, uh, this act, build up this access road and this well location to about this point and to fill in this southern berm, probably to about that point. So uh, um, please watch for the flashing lights and the signs because there's just a lot of trucks moving around. Um, as I mentioned, the tree clearing on the southern berm is complete and we're just about cut through on the northern berm. Um, our hope is that, and my best, hope, my best target is that we'll have preliminary containment and I would define preliminary containment as having uh, an earthen berm, not the final berm, but an earthen berm along this southern, so southern boundary and this access road built up so that we have containment because the highest area of concern is this bayou down here and that's where we're trying to make sure we protect. So we would hope to have preliminary containment. I would hope to have that level in the first, next two weeks. Um, Maybe sooner. It all depends on how fast we can get trucks and dirt called in and get it leveled out. Let me go back a little bit. Um, 
Anyway, that pretty much covers the containment system. Um, again, our target is to have preliminary containment on the, the south and the west, which would give us containment from uh, blowing out by, uh, in the next two weeks. Uh, the second big area of our response is, is gas venting. Um, understanding where the gas is and venting it off out of the aquifer. Um, as we've said, we've had relief wells in now. First one, I think, started venting in early November. To date, we've vented a little over 5 million cubic feet of gas and continue. Uh, but it's not near enough. Um, as we continue to try to accelerate, uh, the key points here is, you know, we've installed six relief wells and three are venting. Uh, we hope to have 11 more installed by February 15th. And I'm pushing the design and planning phase for another 10 beyond that. Um, so real quickly, we hope to have over 20 wells venting. And we'll see that as we continue to uh, venting and flaring as we continue to see uh, progress made. The measurement of progress or how, how quickly we're getting the gas vented out of the aquifer will be done through re uh, periodic uh, logging of these relief wells with a density tool that will actually show the thickness of the gas layer. And we'll compare the, we have to do that initially to know where to perforate those wells to allow the gas come out. And then we'll do following, you know, follow up ones probably about monthly to determine how well that, that, how fast that gas layer is thinning. We've had some preliminary indication on one well that there, the gas layer is thinning out and by virtue of how several of the other vent wells have performed, it appears that the gas is thinning out some but it's way too early to tell and it's way too preliminary. The other thing that will happen is we put in more and more wells and uh, you know, as I, you can see all these circles, those are future planned wells and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But one of the things we get is data on how thick that gas layer is each time we put in a well. With that and with the additional wells that we're installing, we'll begin to map very accurately where, where the gas is and where the gas is not. The lay of the land here, these, this right here is a vent well, here's a vent well. This well was installed originally by DNR and Shaw, but there is not a gas layer there. We have a relief well right in here, and we have two more right in here that basically operate as one. The next phase of wells will have this one, this one. We're going to uh, continue to work on getting this one uh, performing better, but then the green circles, if you can see this, and you'll see it when you see it, a picture of them. These circles are additional relief wells that will be put along this access road that we're building up. So the first thing is we have to get the, the road built up, and then we'll put in the wells. And then the blue was what we had talked and come up with back last Friday as the second phase or third phase of wells. However, because of access and the fact that this whole area is basically a swamp with trees and there's no roads and there's probably a foot of water in most parts, if not more. The challenge is not having a rig to put in the well, the challenge is having a road and trees clears to get to the location. Uh, so, you know, as we move ahead, um, getting landowner access, we have landowner access in this area, we're looking for landowner access in this area, and we've got a couple more locations we plan on putting up in here to tie into a pressure monitoring well that we've already installed to try to vent that portion off also. Um, so again, you see the green circles, that's the next 11, and the blue are the next 10 after that. These may change from time to time because we're already looking at putting this one in uh, before and this one before some of these others because it's dry ground and we can get to it sooner. Um, so we've got all the material we need. Uh, we need uh, roads and trees cleared and landowner access in some places, and that, and that we're all working on. So that's kind of a, a quick snapshot of where we're going with gas venting. Um, next, key, just to kind of recap, I've talked about this at the last uh, meeting, but we continue to monitor the air, both the area around the sinkhole, um, the community, as well as we're doing indoor monitoring on the community. Um, I think at this point in time there's been over 97 indoor sampling events 
and none have shown uh, detectable LEL or uh, hydrogen sulfide levels, which is good news. Um, we have, there's some notes down here, it's at this point in time we have 23 indoor LEL slash H2S or hydrogen sulfide monitor sets in service, and we hope to have another 22 installed uh, by the end of next week. We've got more on order and essentially we're getting them as fast as that manufacturer can turn those out um, to put in. But the, the best news here is that we've not detected any, LA, any elevated out levels of LEL or H2S either with indoor sampling or through these continuous monitors. We've had a couple of false alarms, uh, but we've never detected any actual levels. From a water standpoint, we continue to take uh, twice monthly samples of surface water and groundwater. Uh, we do have some contamination in the sinkhole with hydrocarbons, chlorides, and, and total dissolved solids, but we've not seen any impact of anything with the sinkhole off-site. So our hope is that through continued monitoring, but more important, the sinkhole containment system, we can continue to say that uh, in future meetings. That's why we're putting in the sinkhole containment system. The last bit of monitoring I want to talk about is the, the seismic monitoring or the passive. Uh, you'll hear two terms tonight, passive seismic monitoring and active seismic monitoring. Passive is basically where you use a geophone uh, like one of these that's actually put in wells or surface geophone stations to measure seismic activity. That's what the USGS stations have been monitoring since they came in in, I think, uh, July. Um, we're in the process of installing a very comprehensive seismic monitoring system, a passive seismic monitoring system that will include six uh, stations uh, mounted in 80-foot cased wells. Uh, they'll be much more sensitive and accurate than what the USGS surface uh, stations were. We already have a 480-foot geophone well that is, will have, has a temporary geophone right now will have its permanent geophone within the next uh, two weeks. And then we're also installing uh, a thousand foot geophone well. Uh, go back a little bit to the map. This pad right here is the location for what we're calling G03. That's the thousand foot deep geophone well. Um, uh, let me go back. We will be putting a, a permanent geophone system in that. And then we have a well that's no longer in operation called number one well that sits on top of the salt. It will also have a geophone assembly installed. So when all of these together will provide a very comprehensive monitoring process to continue to monitor for any seismic activity uh, going forward. Uh, that's primarily why uh, USGS just recently, I think, uh, removed their geophone sets because uh, the process we already have basically duplicates what they were doing and what we will have when we get all these wells put in, in the next couple of weeks to next month on the G-103 well be far more superior. Um, that's pretty much it. I guess the last thing on the uh, passive seismic system, uh, note here and you'll see it on our updates um, on our website, is all the data from these uh, geophones will stream live to the SERI helicorder site um, to allow anybody that can go online to look at it and that location of that site is on our website. Uh, so all of those will basically uh, be identified and will flow in there so we can see the, the activity of all those, uh, those geophones. 